Okay, hi everyone. We are here with uh, Dr. Applebaum, the Assistant Professor of, of, in the Department of Accounting and Finance. Uh, she's joining us today to talk about Bitcoin. So we welcome her. Before we begin uh, with your questions as well as our prepared questions, uh, we want to ask uh, if Dr. Applebaum could, could give us a brief description of her background, her academic background, and her areas of research. Well, thank you very much, Phil, for inviting me to start this session, this a series of every Thursday at 1 o'clock at Montclair Business School. We, have, we feel very valuable to reach out to the local community and the business community at large about important modern business topics. So uh, my area of research is accounting information systems, particularly blockchain, Bitcoin, drones, um, IT information systems uh, in the accounting and auditing process. I teach advanced audit and audit and uh, fraud examination and accounting information systems here at the university. Um, my area of research has been mainly about using technology in the audit process. And I received my PhD from Rutgers University last year. Great. So for those of you who just joined us, we're here with Dr. Applebaum talking about uh, Bitcoin. This is Feliciano Live, which uh, we will do every Thursday at 1 o'clock. We picked this topic based on our followers who um, recommended we, we talk about this uh, topic, which is hot right now. So let me ask, and as we're, um, as the professor is speaking, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask those questions, and I, I assure you we'll get to them. So the first question is, what is Bitcoin? How does it work, and how do you buy it? Okay, so Bitcoin can be is generally accepted to be considered as a virtual decentralized currency in the sense that it is a virtual product. It's not tied to any particular asset or it's not a hard physical item that you could hold. Um, it's information, basically. It's the uh, validation and security of information, and it's not controlled by a third-party bank or a central authority like most cash or currencies are. It is actually controlled by a consensus or peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, the, the idea of Bitcoin is that we have you know, items that we want to exchange and you may not be able to trust your other party you're exchanging with. So the, the actual digital hashing, the technology behind the virtual currency is what uh, allows it to be immutable, unchangeable, and trustworthy. And, re and actually negates the need for a third party intermediary, which normally in most currency situations is a, is a party that enforces the rules of the exchange. So. Um, actually, some would argue that Bitcoin, instead of like the U.S. dollar, for example, the U.S. dollar has no underlying value except for what is determined by the government and is moderated and maintained by the government. But the difference with the Bitcoin is that we don't have this moderating influence of a government or authority sort of smoothing out all the pitfall, the valleys and peaks of the pricing valuation. Um, one, look, one way to look at Bitcoin is to think of it as... Uh, for example, uh, stone currency, for example, the island of Yap is a good example of a, the early example of what we're talking about, virtual currency. So the island of Yap, the inhabitants decided they wanted to use stones from a neighboring island to basically act as a form of currency. But the stones are very large, they're very heavy, and they had to be built, to look, they had to be chiseled away to look like big donuts. And you may see pictures online of these donuts, um, but the problem is trying to transport them from that island to the island of Yap. So they decided they were going to agree amongst themselves that these stones could stay where they're at, and everyone agreed that they existed there, but then they would agree that when a transaction occurred that the ownership would transfer from one person to the other. And so that's like the first kind of virtual consensus currency that we can think of. In fact, the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis recently published a paper using the island of Yap as a good example. So Bitcoin is very similar to that, except that we're not talking about stones, we're talking about a virtual mathematical formula or equation that is basically ensuring that the transaction occurred. So this is where people have trouble wrapping their minds around the idea of Bitcoin because it's not like it represents commodities. So in the commodities market, yes, or asset market, you have, you know, you're buying the rights to something, but it's not, you know, you're still getting a physical object that's tied to. Or with currency, you have an actual asset or, or something you're buying. Whereas with Bitcoin, but what you're really paying for is the actual uh, the work that is required to actually compute this security, this information, and whatever people think it's worth. And so in order to purchase Bitcoin, you'd have to actually load up software in your computer that is actually called a Bitcoin wallet. Then you have to actually fill that wallet with actual currency, uh, whether it's U.S. dollars or another type of format, or you could use your credit card, although that's becoming less of an, uh, less of an option. 
and then you need to actually then put out that you want to buy a, cur uh, a Bitcoin. Then that, that coin has to be validated by the uh, miners, which uh, is another co conversation here, but uh, to actually see that the transaction is valid. And this is where the proof of work comes in because it takes about 10 minutes for this for the quantum computers to actually calculate the new verified transaction. Now bear in mind that um, the Bitcoin basically is reflected by the technology called blockchain, blockchain, which is basically the idea that every block or every transaction in the monetary system, or in this case, uh, any kind of information system, would have all the information from previous transactions plus the current timestamp of the current transaction. And this is all under the digital hashing. So that has to be verified. And the more transactions we have, of course, and that means the more we're going to have, uh, it's going to take longer to compute. So there, is some, there are some issues in terms of you know, the, the Bitcoin being able to be viable in some cases. Like, and so if we're using it quite frequently and it takes 10 minutes to transact for every Bitcoin transaction, there is obviously a lag. Um, so that was how you, how, that's how you have to you would buy it once you are approved as the actual new valid owner of that Bitcoin. So for those who just joined us, we're here with Dr. Applebaum. She's an assistant professor in the Department of Accounting and Finance. We're talking about Bitcoin. Uh, if you have any questions as we're interviewing her, please feel free to ask them. We actually do have a live question. Okay. Uh, thoughts on the long-term use case of Bitcoin given the power-hungry nature of POW, POW? I'm not sure what that refers to. So for the person who asked that question, just please describe, uh, if you could just uh, text back in, what does POW refer to? I'm not sure what that stands for. Oh, pr proof of work? Oh, okay. Well, that's, this is the whole problem. The more transactions you have on the block, uh, the longer and harder it becomes to actually provide that proof of work. And so, yes, there is, I mean, anybody can actually load the software on their computer and provide a proof of work, but it, whether you'd want to, given the power it requires to do that, um, there are stories about miners where uh, during the wintertime they don't have to run heater, heating in their houses because the computers generate so much heat from the transactional power that's required to generate or validate a new transaction that they don't have to run their heating system. Uh, so this is a very valid question. Um, also, the big other question is whether it could be HABE as a currency, given that, you know, currencies, for example, you know, like the options market, for example, or any kind of transaction, you have lots of transactions, and the demand on the system would be huge. I know when the uh, blockchain was plunging, or the Bitcoin was plunging earlier in December, uh, people were trying to dump their holdings, and the Bitcoin, Bitcoin transaction could not handle it. So uh, this, is a big, this is a big issue. Okay, for those of you who just joined us, we're here with Dr. Applebaum talking about Bitcoin. And we have another question. Why would someone use Bitcoin as opposed to physical currency? Well, I mean, in my opinion, <laughs> I, I have trouble understanding that it's a currency, personally, myself, right now. Uh, I would say this, I mean, in terms of just, I mean, if you want to make earnings or equity, then yes, it's a, it's a possibility to invest in Bitcoin. Uh, but it's like anything else in investing, it uh, really depends on your investment profile. Just bear in mind that there are no guarantees about your holdings. Um, if you know, Bitcoin has been hacked a few times, uh, basically of the end users uh, from via their wallets. So this is a problem where if there's a hacking and uh, you know, billions and millions of dollars leave the Bitcoin exchange, that you have no recourse to get back your investment. Uh, so there's a very, very high risk volatile investment. Um, I'm, I'm dubious as whether it could behave as a large-term currency because of the nature of the proof of work and the computational energy it requires. Okay, we have another live question. In your opinion, how long would the Bitcoin craze last? Well, this is a very interesting question, too, because we have Goldman Sachs saying this could be zero in a very short-term future, and other uh, prognosticators saying that it could go up to 50000 during this year. Uh, so it really depends on... Uh, Really, I think, you know, if it's, if it's someone who's involved with the commodity side and looking at it as an investment instrument or a way to make a quick equity, then, they, you know, of course, they're saying that it would last for a long time. I think the blockchain technology has more promise because, you know, since it's validating information points or, or changes of, of the quality or condition of asset, that that is something that businesses are looking and almost everybody in the industry is very excited about the use of blockchain as opposed to Bitcoin. 
Okay. So, for example, Walmart, for example, recently patented a delivery drone that ties the feed to the delivery drone to the blockchain. So that's the way they can validate that the deliveries are, are occurring, that no one stopped and shot down the drone or took off the, the item that the drone was carrying. So they're using the blockchain to validate drone delivery feeds. Another live question. Aren't there more viable options than Bitcoin like Ethereum and Stellar Lumen? I understand Bitcoin is a buzzword right now. But it is not the best blockchain technology out there. Well, this is a, this is another point also. Um, the Bitcoin is the original uh, technology uh, that reflects the the work of Satoshi Nakamoto, who is a basically the founder uh, produced the white paper that started the whole Bitcoin uh, technology and trading. Uh, there are other there are other digital currencies out there. There's fact there's thousands of exchanges. Uh, but they pretty much all follow the Bitcoin in terms of the valuation. Uh, so when Bitcoin goes up and down, sometimes they, they follow or they don't or they may deviate slightly from those trends. They're a little more affordable right now than the Bitcoin. OK, what are the pitfalls associated with purchasing Bitcoin, in your opinion? Well, the pitfalls, you have no guarantee or there's no protection of your investment if, uh, for example, there is an occasion of theft or hacking of the, uh, the Bitcoins. So I would say that it's for somebody who feels comfortable with the technology or comfortable with, uh, you know, has like a high risk profile, investing profile. Okay. Why has Bitcoin become more successful than other available cryptocurrencies? Mainly because of the nature that it's, it's, it was the longest one around and it's the one that's gotten the most publicity and because it reflects the Nakamoto's uh, original philosophy. Okay, we're here. For those who just joined us, we're here with Dr. Applebaum, the assistant professor in the Department of Accounting and Finance here at Feliciano School of Business. She's talking about Bitcoin. Um, I have another live question. Okay. B Bitcoin has such a super dominance that I can't see it becoming irrelevant in some time. I guess on a question, a comment. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a possibility. I mean, I think there's always going to be people who are interested in investing or using Bitcoin. Um, it does provide some benefit in the sense that uh, – you know, if you have a limited number of transactions and it's not enough, so many transactions that it floods the system, I think that it does provide guarantee of transaction security so for parties that don't know one another. And I think it's always going to be popular with money launderers and drug dealers because there is no, uh, you know, the users or the buyers and sellers of Bitcoin, for example, are not identified. Uh, Congress is very concerned about it. They passed an anti-money laundering bill and most of it is dedicated to digital currencies. They're very concerned about it. The IRS has its own interest in this right now. In fact, it recently brought a court conjunction to uh, seize the records of 14,000 transactions on the Bitcoin exchange that they feel may have been occurring from U.S. citizens, and they feel and they're noticing that these are not being reported. They're going to make sure they're being reported this year. So, uh, you know, I think the whole space. Once we have definitions of the stand from the standard setters, such as you know, IRS, uh, if they refine what they consider to be Bitcoin, right now it's considered to be an asset or a capital gain or capital loss. It's not a currency. Once the Financial Accounting Standards Board, you know, they, they decide what they want to do with Bitcoin and blockchain in terms of accounting, I think we'll see more, we'll see a better development in terms of how Bitcoin is going to last and what its viability will be in the near and far term future. Okay, we have a comment. Bitcoin doesn't live up to what Satoshi was trying to accomplish. Bitcoin Cash is a lot faster. Well, this is true. Uh, but that's also been a fork that came off from the original Bitcoin Core. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is faster. Uh, so, like I said, there there is chances. I mean, I think the big issue right now for the whole Bitcoin digital currency domain, though, is that the standard setters and other uh, entities have not really defined like what they want to do with this whole space of information and space of of, of currency and assets. So I think once we have standards around it, but of course that goes against Nakamoto's philosophy. I mean, it was supposed to be a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. So the more you get standards and third-party intervention, that takes away from the beauty, quote-unquote, of blockchain and Bitcoin. Okay, another live question. Are there other paradigms where the original proof of concept has remained a metric on which the rest of the market is gauged against? So if I understand that, correct, understand that question correctly, they're asking whether there's other commodities or other assets in the marketplace that would also use proof of work as a, as a point of value. I imagine that's what the question is asking. I mean, as far as I know, uh, the digital currencies are the only format for that at this pr pr present time. Right. Okay. 
Okay, and the oh, we have a, another live question. Okay. How do you purchase Bitcoin? Like I said, you have to you have to buy a wallet. You have to form. You have to download the software to get it. What's called a Bitcoin wallet. Then you have to actually fill your wallet with currency from whatever currency you're using, or at least like filed with a credit card. Then you would actually then you know try to buy Bitcoin, but it has to be validated by the proof of work. So it may take up to ten minutes for it to be approved by the consensus. Great. So we have a, about a minute left of the okay. session. If there's any remaining questions or comments, please ask them. I'll, I'll ask one last question of mine. Uh, what are the benefits associated? Oh, hold on. Okay. Aside from the argument, if cryptocurrency is a valid currency or not, is the opposition from government and banks not just a self-preservation move? Um, it could very well be. Um because you know, basically, it sort of invalidates the need for third-party interventions, uh, particularly for currencies. Uh, if you consider fiat currency like the U.S. dollar, is very similar to Bitcoin in the sense that there's no real hard asset backing it anymore. But it does have the government uses the Federal Reserve and other policies to smooth the ups and downs of the valuation of the dollar or other currencies. So, um, yes, it could be a possible possibility that the government's trying to protect its own interest into the currencies, yes, it's a possibility. Okay, we have a comment. Worth noting that most of the major hacks were a result of trying to recentralize, uh, in parentheses, exchanges, POS, and pools. Exactly. So, I mean, most of, like, it's not the technology itself, the hacking, the actual digital signatures weren't hacked, but it was the actual endpoint users is where we had the breach and security. And they still don't know how the hacking occurred. And then a comment, the Senate hearing was surprisingly positive on the matter. Yes, but, okay. but just to point out that there's is a big focus of the anti-money laundering bill as well, though. So, like I said, I think part of the issue is a lot, there's a lot of ambiguity amongst uh, the congressional leaders, amongst the standard setters as to what, how to treat Bitcoin and other types of digital currency currently. So once we get that ironed out, I think that the future of this type of currency will be more clear or, or a little more established. Okay, we have time for one more question, and I'll pause here. If anyone has one last question, otherwise we'll wrap up the session. Oh, here's a question. Okay, is it possible that big banks like J.P. Morgan Chase are trying to undermine Ripple because they make a lot of money from other banks to send money overseas? Well, yes. I mean, this is another problem, too, because actually, I mean, think about it. Bitcoin or a blockchain technology reduces the need for third-party intermediaries and Basically, Ripple and other types of, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically the, the whole exchange of money between countries. So, uh, yes, it, there is an economic incentive to avoid use of large-scale use of Bitcoin. Okay, one last question. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. Okay, great. Well, we want to thank uh, Dr. Applebaum for her time uh, talking about Bitcoin. Uh, please join us next Thursday at 1 o'clock, same time, uh, Feliciano Live, as we talk about the stock market volatility and spend some time uh, diving into that subject. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Thank and you. Thank you, uh, Professor Applebaum. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>